Today we have Gabby Goodwin in three, two, one. Hello, today we're here with Gabby Goodwin from Gabby's Bows. So for the people who don't know, what is Gabby's Bows? Gabby Bows, they are breasts that don't fill out the hair. So they have two faces, so you can see the design both ways, and have teeth and craters to trap the hair. So you would wrap the hair around the center strip, and then snap one end closed and snap the other end closed and it doesn't come out. So we have our barrettes. We also have plant-based all natural hair products and other solutions to be able to help moms, dads, and girls. Well, I was when I was growing up and I was little, I would wear barrettes that would slip out of my hair. And um, my parents were getting very frustrated. They were spending time and money on trying to make me look cute. So um, to be able to come up with this design first. Um, so we have three designs. Um, they are Daddy's Girl, Little Lady, and Sweet Pea. We named it our designs after what moms and dads call the little girls. So we are all about um, empowering girls to be able to love their hair, to um, feel pretty as well with these breasts. And do you do motivational speaking? Yes, I do speak. Um, I've been across the country right now since we're um, in the pandemic. I'm not really traveling right now, but definitely um, I would have been traveling and definitely after this is over, I will be traveling as well. And for the people who don't know, what type of braids do you make? And there are there are 15 colors. So um, in our little lady, which I'm holding, which is a ladybug, um, we have red, pink, and then a light. And then we have our daddy's girl, which is a bow tie. Um, is after my dad. He's a bow tie comedian, and uh, we have a daddy's girl named after him. And when you started selling, did you sell online at first or from a store? We launched our website um, in 2014. Um, we filled online orders in all 50 states and in 10 countries. Um, now we're um, in Target stores. We're in 74 Targets, and we're also in um, different beauty supply stores in the US, Canada, South Africa. So we're all over the world, but we did start um, as an online business. And how did you get all these stores wanting to sell for you? Yes, just being able to put your name out there, um, using social media, having a social media presence is definitely big because a lot of the um, opportunities that I've been able to have, a lot of things that I've done has come off of social media. So, using hashtags um, and putting yourself out there, doing videos, being consistent, all those different things, and just being able to uh, put yourself out there. And when you just started, how did you create a name for this company? When we started with Gabby Bows, now it's Confidence, um, but definitely my name is Gabby and then we have Barrett slash Bows. So that's the name that we came up with at first. Um, now, since we have Confidence um, as our new name, um, one reason is we did launch a hair product line, as I was talking about earlier, that's named Confidence by Gabby Goodwin. Um, and then also, um, me as a team, as a person that's inspiring girls, um, and definitely me when I was little, this business has definitely helped me grow my confidence. Um, I was very shy. Uh, when I was starting in our first commercial, I was holding my necklace the entire time. So I was very shy and wasn't really into talking to people at vendor shows. Um, so we want to send, well, I want to set an example for girls so that they can be able to be confident in their selves and their hair and just being themselves. So let me get this straight. You're a motivational speaker. You make hair breaths. Like, what do you not do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and why is this product so important because i imagine there's a lot of other products like yours that are out there in the market yes yeah, so our barrettes are the first and patented of its kind is definitely important because i know there are a lot of girls and there are millions of little girls just like me african-american little girls at under the age of 10 so there are a lot of people that wear barrettes that fall out of their hair and 
their parents are having to spend money and time just to try to find the barrettes that stay in their daughter's hair, finding ways to keep them in. So being able to create this, we have solved the age old problem because my grandma wore those barrettes, my mom wore these. Um, so being able to solve this issue really helps people and we've saved 75% of off of people's barrette bills just because of this business. So we have saved a lot of people money and time on our hair products. And we don't really see anything that's geared to little girls. Um, our target market for this hair product line is little girls. A lot of people use it, but definitely that's our target market. So being able to help girls um, feel confident in themselves. That's why we named the hairline Confidence um, because I knew when I was growing up or a lot of kids growing up, um, especially in the older generations like my mom, um, she was telling me that she didn't really grow up wearing her natural hair. She had a perm and a lot of kids had perms. So they weren't really confident in their natural hair. And so definitely for this line we want to help moms and girls cherish their time together so we have um, different products um, so we have the scalp pomade which is an alternative to grease the grease that we use to part the hair it has a lot of harmful chemicals that will suffocate the scalp so we created a plant-based all-natural alternative to that so that people don't have to deal with that issue and we have the detangling and conditioning milk I know there are a lot of girls that wear our barrettes that have that are tender headed that don't really like getting their hair detangled. Uh, so being able to create this milk it reduces the detangling time in half. It also doesn't cause any tears during the detangling time or the detangling process. And you can also use it as a conditioner as well. So we're just trying to be able to help girls um, cherish precious time together. And something I am confused about, since I've never had to twist my hair and like put things on it, um, I don't know, how is it painful? And how does your part not painful? Yeah, so definitely, I know some girls, um, if they're wearing barrettes, they would try to pull them out. And sometimes that would, I mean, not take the braid or twist out, but it would definitely pull on your scalp and that that definitely hurts. Yeah, so our story, uh, I started thinking about this at five. My mom went on Twitter one day after years and years of me wearing barrettes and losing them. She went on Twitter and started ranting about how my bows did not stay in my hair. So after her and a bunch of other moms were going back and forth about these barrettes that were horrible, they didn't stay in their hair, they were a waste of time, waste of money, and um, mind you, these are moms that spend probably 15, 20 minutes each morning doing their daughter's hair. So um, our pastor jumped into the suite and then he said, sounds like a mark you need to break into. So as I said, I was five. I was very optimistic. <laughs> and um, I kept asking my mom about these barrettes because I didn't want to um, get in trouble for losing my barrettes. But I also wanted to solve a problem and um and first my mom tried to sell the idea because she wasn't really trying to start a business um she just had my brother and she still she had and still has a full-time job so she's juggling different things and she does not want to add another ball which is <laughs> entrepreneurship as well and then we started the business two years later when i was seven uh, so um, after that, we've been in business for six years now, and it's been a really cool journey. So I'm guessing that your mom also has to do her braids every morning, then has to do your braids, then has well, to get a full-time job, and then has to do with entrepreneurship. Yeah, so, well, she, at that time, um, she was not she was not natural. Now she wears her full natural hair out, but um, at that time, she was not. So she was dealing with all these different things. So. Um, having to juggle that, it was definitely, I know it was hard for both of us. And wouldn't you have to sell a lot of barrettes to make any profit? 
Yeah, so we still haven't broken break even. Um, there are a lot of different um, things that go into the business that we constantly pay for and things like that. But we have sold thou- tens of thousands, probably hundreds of thousands, pa- of hundred thousand packs or more and more than that. So um, we have definitely made um, some big profits, um, but definitely <laughs> one big goal is to break even for our business. And what age are these for? Um, so our target market is about the 3 to 11. Um, because I know two-year-olds, they might not have enough hair. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> if you don't wear the barrettes, if you're a teen like me and don't wear the barrettes, you can use our hair products um, or you can read the book that we have or anything like that. So you can use other products that we have. How did you get in contact with all these big stores to start selling? Um, so Target... We started talking to probably February of last year. Uh, So we got into stores or we had our debut in October of last year. So it was definitely cool to talk to them, to be a part of Target stores. I was spending my whole summer last year packing barrettes, those 5,000 packs that I had to inspect so this is a lot of packs. And how did you get in contact with manufacturing companies? Because I'm just here and I'm sitting down and like, oh, I want to sell these things, but how can I make these people in China sell it, ship it over to Target, and then like get any money? Because that costs like half of the manufacturing cost, I imagine. Yes. Um, so manufacturing, as you said, is very costly. Um, so backtrack, probably when we started thinking about the idea, I was probably six. And this is when my mom was trying to sell it. So um, we went through two focus groups um, with the company we were trying to sell to. And as as you can see, they did not move forward with it. But um, my mom was like, I can't just stop. I have a daughter that's at home that's nagging me all the time about the threat and I need to do something. Um, so the that company, introduced us to the engineers and then the engineers connected us to the manufacturers that we still work with today. Uh, so our in, our engineers are about two hours away, one and a half hour away from where we live. Um, and then China is a whole other country or a whole other continent um, if we did not try to sell the business. Um, but um, yes, it's very costly. Um, you have to get a mold. You have to do all these different things um, just to get the barrettes. But it's definitely been a really cool thing to see. So you're telling me you nagged your mom so much. She went to engineers to contact China to start selling your product in Target, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I was very um, optimistic, as I said. I was very excited about these barrettes. Um, not only because I didn't want to get in trouble, but also I wanted to create something as well. And how old are you? I'm 13. Oh, same age as me. Nice. And when you started, did you make, um, what, how did you transition from making the breads online to making them by hand, from making the breads by hand to getting someone else to make them? Um, so first we had drawings. We never made them by hand, um, but we created the designs we created the uh, concept we had somebody draw our idea down and able they were able to and we were able to put that or bring that over to the engineers and the manufacturers Um, but there are different prototypes that the engineers make and that we send over to China and the manufacturers and all these different things so I'm being able to go through us at the kitchen table to us trying to sell it but then we were able to contact or get in contact with um, our engineers and our manufacturers uh, was the whole process and then as we got our first order in um, which was the little lady which what that was what we started with um, the three little lady colors being able to go um, from that and then we were able to add different colors add more designs and um, add different things, add different packaging as well. Um, so we are probably in about 90, and adding up from Target and then other um, beauty supply stores that we have deals with and things like that. 
And when you started selling with Target, did you have to stop doing any work or was it more work? Because it sounds like you just got everyone to make it, Target sold, and you just received profit. What did you have to do? Also, there's definitely um, marketing that you're in Target. Um, we, well, I did a, did a few photo shoots. I did a few um, interviews in Target as well. Um, but being able to travel as well. Uh, when I was traveling, I would always see if there's a Target near me and I would go there and I would do a live and say, hi, if you're in this area, the Target that carries Gabby Bows. Um, so there's definitely um, more to it. Target has to take their cut, but then we also get ours as well. Um, but being able to, as I said, go to the Target headquarters, we definitely learn more about it. And when you're starting to sell and your mom was contacting the engineers, you didn't exactly have a product at the time. You had a design. How did you turn that design into a product and with no money get people to make it for you? Because I don't imagine you had any money at the time when China started manufacturing your products. And so we were able, when we started, um, when we launched our website, we already had the barrettes. Uh, but we definitely, my parents, have, they went into their retirement to pay for uh, our first order. So we are... Uh, my parents were very determined. Uh, that was one thing as well. We did not know how much it was going to be. Um, my mom did not know how much it was going to be, but she wanted to show me that nothing was impossible and that I can go for my dreams. So um, this, is <laughs> this is how um, a science project turned into a six-figure business. So um, if this Amazon, we usually make the bundles ourselves and send it to the fulfillment center or we fulfill it on our own and send it to the person um, but there's different ways to do it as well the only thing i'm kind of confused on is when you're just starting and i mean just at the start thinking i want to start this company how did you get people to make it for you and then how did you get the people that have already made your product to get it on sale and your website or wherever it went to get it shipped yeah, so we got in contact with our engineers. Um, we were able to make prototypes and things like that. Well, they were able to do that. Um, and then we sent that over to manufacturers. They were able to make it. They sent it over to us. And then we have, um, we fulfill orders. We do different things um, with it. We send it to stores. Um, if we had any deals or if we had any contracts with any stores. When was that point when you realized this was no longer a hobby and was a company? <laughs> well, definitely um, when we got our first order um, or we got a few views, it wasn't a few, it was like a thousand and maybe a few hours when we put our commercial out. Um, so I knew it was like, I wasn't really, I was seven at the time. So I wasn't really <laughs> that, well, I mean, I knew I had something, but I didn't know that it was a full-fledged business. Other stores reached out saying that they wanted our product. Um, when I was able to travel around, um, I think my first flight was to Chicago, I think. And then I was able to be like, whoa, this is really cool. Um, so it was definitely really cool. It's definitely, well, for me, I never thought of it as a hobby. I, I always thought of it as like a thing that I do, like as a, um, it's a daily thing. It's not really something for fun. I want to inspire people. I want to help people feel confident in their selves. So it's not just a hobby. It's more of a thing where I'm able to inspire people and inspire myself. Cause as I said, I've been able to grow my confidence um, through this. So, uh, but definitely being able to travel for the first time, for the first few times, um, selling our products at vendor shows and almost selling out and all these different things definitely showed me that this wasn't just a hobby. This could be really successful. Um, well, that's a pretty good explanation, but how did you balance all the negative criticism or was there none? We've heard a lot of different no's uh, from TV shows, at vendor shows, anywhere. We've heard no's. What do you mean by the big no? Like a television show tell you that you can't do it or something? 
And so it was a television show we were recording for. It was for my fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> so I was out there doing my best. Uh, I was really energetic, and then I didn't win. So it was really hard for me um, to go through that. But that definitely after I went through that, I was not confident in myself. Um, I didn't want to do things. I didn't want to pitch or anything uh, for a few months because I was like, I don't, I don't want to do this because I just lost fifty thousand dollars, and I don't know what else I can do. If I can't get fifty thousand dollars, I don't know what else I can get. Um, but being able to keep pushing, a few months later, I was able to go and pitch to some angel investors. And um, we did not get the investment we wanted, but they did set up a fund for us for, for people to give tax-free donations to our business. And we still have a great relationship with them. I just spoke at their summit they had. I was keynote speaker um, last year, so or probably this year, actually. But uh, just being able to push past those no's has definitely helped us to be where we are today because I know a lot of people, um, it, as a small business, they may be like, oh my God, I heard this no, I can't do it anymore, and just quit. Um, but we kept pushing, we kept moving forward, and now, as I said, we're in Target. We've sold across the world, and there's a lot of different things in store for Gabby Bros, for confidence. Being able to push yourself, I know sometimes, especially if you have schoolwork to do, um, especially during this time because we're all at home. We all may want to stay in our beds and sleep, but we have online schoolwork to do. Um, so being able to push past all those different things that are pulling you down and weighing you down and just go for your dreams. Um, this has been me. amazing. 